Immortal is the army's Jock of the Bushveld, tough as nails and regarded with utmost respect and affection by those who depend upon it for their very lives. Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, appreciate you stopping by. On today's video we're talking about South African Armoured Fighting Vehicles. I'd like to do a massive shout out to the creator of this book, South African Armoured Vehicles, A History of Innovation and Excellence by Dr. Deval Venter. Uh, he is a fantastic uh, gentleman for sending me the book for free and creating this book. It is great, you can go check out the description box below if you wish to go to the website to purchase the book and it is a very very good read i have to admit i've uh, read it a couple of times obviously and the information that will be provided in this video will be coming from this book so thank you again dewald i really appreciate it and uh, we'll get straight into it now the rattel 90 comes from a host of a family of the rattel icv platforms and is just one of many models that were produced it takes its afrikaans name from the south african honey badger this animal as you're probably aware despite of its size is a fierce creature which is able to absorb a large amount of physical damage Damage, as well as dish it out with its long claws. The Rattel vehicle is therefore well named and its armaments and mobility make it a formidable opponent. During the 1960s there was a growing realization in the South African Defense Force that foreign imported armored troop vehicles such as the Saracen were not up to the task against modern threats and the requirements based on the challenges found in the South African battle space. What was needed was a highly maneuverable, ultra reliable and easy to maintain ICV armed to the teeth which could fulfill the doctrine requirements being developed by the South African Defence Force for mobile warfare. In 1972, South African company Springfield Bussing presented a 6x6 APC built by MAN for trials. It would later be named the Buffel, not to be confused with the Buffel of other vehicles. Of the five contenders, the Springfield Bussing Buffel was found to be the most suitable and would, after another year or two, be more evaluated upon trials and serve as the development platform for the designing of the Rattal. The first prototype Rattal SS was made of mild steel which would allow quicker modification work. Although the exterior resemblance between the Buffel and the Rattal SS are noticeable, the Rattal SS was a completely different beast altogether. Testing on the Rattal SS was done over a five month period in 1974 and the first four production Rattals were put in their paces for the vehicle testing grounds near Pretoria in 1975. The first batch of 13 Rattel Mark 1s were delivered from the production line in 1975 also, followed then by a series production. After operational field experience, several improvements were made which enhanced the Rattel's bush braking capability. The Rattel 20 can be seen as the base model from which Rattel family was really produced. The production of the Rattel 12.7 Command commenced in 1979 to 1980 after completing its evaluation and testing successfully. However, there was also a strong need for anti-tank vehicles, and this was already expressed in 1974 and by early 1979, where the Aland 90 turret was fitted to the strengthened Rattal 20 hull, thus giving birth to the Rattal 90. Live fire tests were successful, and more were ordered. The Rattal 90 would see first combat during Operation Septic, as part of the Battle Group 61. Rattal 60 was conceived in 1980-1981 as a stopgap due to the shortage of Rattal 20s, in turn to the shortage of the 20mm F2 Gayat guns. In terms of its design features, the Rattal was the best vehicle ever made for ultra-mobile African bush warfare. The terrain it operated in is some of the most hostile in the world, which alone inflicts harsher punishment on vehicles like this. Characterized by its massive wheels, swiftness, bush breaking ability and versatility as a weapons platform, it was a fearsome adversary in the skilled hands during the South African border war. The mobility of the Rattal is a 6x6 wheel configuration characterized by its versatility and cross-country capability optimized for the African battle space. I keep saying bushwhacking capabilities, but it literally means that the brush and the bush is so heavy sometimes in South Africa that you have to actually have the capability for it to charge through there. You can't go around it sometimes due to the risk of IEDs, ambushes, etc. So the vehicle needs to literally charge through very thick, heavy brush, vegetation, foliage to get through where it needs to go and that's why it had the capability so well as a mobility to get through that kind of thing. The Rattel uses a Busig D3256 BTXF 6 cylinder direct injection turbocharged diesel engine which produces around about 282 horsepower at 2400 RPM. This provides a 14.9 horsepower per ton power to combat weight ratio for the Rattel 20. The engine is located at the rear left of the vehicle and proved more than sufficient to navigate off-road and push through the dense bush and small trees of South Africa. The vehicle could also forward up to about 3.9 feet unprepared or deeper if necessary. Early trials of the vehicle actually showed that the Rattel was an amphibious as a brick. Surprisingly on that occasion the engine kept running underwater however until the Rattel was rescued from its water baptism. The Rattel also has a distinction of sometimes becoming semi-airborne. 
but that will be left for another discussion. The maximum recommended safe speed is 80 km an hour or 50 miles per hour, but the Rattel can achieve 120 km an hour or 75 miles per hour unofficially. Cross country and train dependent, the Rattel can achieve around about 40 km an hour or 25 miles per hour, and its suspension is pretty well equipped with three beam axles, coil springs, and shock absorbers. For something that would need to cross long distances, the fuel capacity of the Rattel is around 480 litres or 37.5 gallons, which allows it to travel 1,000 kilometres or 621 miles by road and 600 kilometres or 372 miles off road, and enables a flexible force movement in order to achieve surprise. The Rattel 90 is equipped with the same turret and a 90mm G2 gun as the Elan 90. It makes use of the high explosive anti tank tracer and high explosive and canister rounds. The high explosive anti tank tracer has a range of about 1.2 kilometers and can penetrate up to 320 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor at zero degrees and 150 millimeters or 5.9 inches at a 60 degree angle. The HE round travels at roughly 650 meters a second and is accurate up to 2.2 kilometers and is pretty hefty at 11.2 pounds. The 90 millimeter gun can elevate between minus 8 degrees and plus 15 degrees and can rotate a full 360 degrees in an impressive 25 seconds. It carries 50 main weapon rounds, which are a vast improvement over the Elan 90. Because of the changes that were delivered from the Elan 90 turret that replaced the fire support role, further changes involved reworking of the roof lining and the reduction of the troop compartment roof hatches from 4 to 2 to accommodate the turret overhang. The Rattel 90 also carries one additional crew member in the mechanized infantry units and none extra in the armored car units. This makes room for much more ammunition for its main gun with the installation of extra ammunition racks. The Rattel 90 was developed as both an anti-tank vehicle and fire support vehicle and proved more than a match for the T-34 85s encountered during early on in the South African border war. As from 1981, the stakes were raised when the FAPLA received T-54, 55 and 62 tanks from the Soviet Union and Cuba. Mechanized infantry groups fielding the Rattel 90s achieved success by skillfully outmaneuvering the newer Soviet tanks, which sometimes required the multiple hits with the 90mm heat rounds from their 90mm guns, often at point-blank range at vulnerable points like engine vents, turret rings, etc. in order to disable them. The Rattel was designed for speed and mobility at the cost of armor. The lower nose plate was 20mm angled at 30 degrees, while the upper nose is 10mm angled at 75 degrees. The upper hull sides are very thin at 8mm at 25 degrees and the lower hull is 10mm. The rear hull is 10mm and the top of the hull is 6mm and the hull floor, worst of all, was 8mm. The frontal arc offers protection against 12.7mm AP rounds, however, the upper hull cheeks can be penetrated. The rest of the hull is sufficiently protected against shrapnel and 7.62mm AP rounds. Rattals are extremely susceptible to fire from Russian supplied 23mm anti-aircraft weapons which were employed in ground defence roles by the MPLA and Cuban forces. Contrary to popular belief though, the Rattel, although designed with the threat of mines in mind, does not feature a V-shaped underbelly and its mine resistance is derived from the hull's weight and height above the ground due to its oversized wheels. The wheels are also designed to blow off and therefore disperse the explosive energy and the wheel arches form a V-shape which helps deflect the mine blasts. During the South African border war, only one mine fatality was recorded when a Rattel drove over a double anti-tank mine which was detonated under the belly of the vehicle during Operation Mibos. In conclusion, the Rattel was the first true-wheeled ICV to enter military service anywhere in the world and for its time was one of the best ICVs also. It is regarded by most military analysts as the grandfather of all subsequent ICV designs. The Rattel became the backbone of the South African Defence Force mechanised battalions and served with distinction during 12 of the 26 years of the South African border war. In an interview with Litnet in 2013, Major General retired Roland de Vries summarised the Rattel. The Rattel was remarkable. If we didn't have Rattels in the Angola during the 80s, we would not have had a peace in our land. The Rattel was more than a weapon. The combination of fire, mobility, armour protection and flexibility in its application allowed the vehicle itself to be an integrated combat system. The Rattel has left a legacy of 44 years of service which have now few military vehicles can compare. The Rattel is now in its final operational service stretch. The South African Defence Force have through Project Hoister have chosen to replace two mechanised battalions of Rattels with the Patria family of ICV vehicles being produced in South Africa and are aptly named the Badger. So this video probably doesn't do this weapons platform anywhere near the justice it deserves, but there is so much information to share about this family of vehicles that I didn't want to go too long without 
you know, going into the weeds here, but honestly, if you do want to learn more about this amazing South African vehicle, I would strongly encourage you to please go check out the book in the description box below. Make sure you use the link uh, and, and take a look at the book. It's fantastic quality, very well made. And thank you again, sir, for sending me the book. If you did enjoy today's video, however, please leave me a like and a comment. I'd really appreciate it. Go check out the description box below also for my social media. And for those who've been supporting me on Patreon and PayPal, I cannot thank you enough. Truly, it does mean the world to me. I don't say it enough, but really it does. Thank you for financially supporting me and my channel. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, click the little bell by the subscribe button. Take care. Bye-bye.